It took some seven hours or so for President Biden to address the American people about yesterday's terror attack in Kabul. And after he did finally speak, he actually took questions from reporters. But as he did, he said this. Ladies and gentlemen, they gave me a list here. The first person I was instructed to call on was Kelly O'Donnell of NBC. Instructed, Emily. I can tell you I've never instructed President Trump to call on a predetermined list of reporters. And then after that, there was the fetal position moment where you had President Biden literally like lie the front of his body on the lectern there. What were your thoughts as you watched that very curious image? I was watching with a group of our colleagues here at Fox News, and I, I at a minimum, I was uncomfortable. At times, I was actually concerned. I think a lot of those beats sort of were so long, I was worried that something was happening with him physically. But Kaylee, to your point, the reason you didn't instruct President Trump on how or who to take questions from is because he was a leader. He was your boss. And I couldn't help but thinking as well how how empathetic and sorry I felt for these gold star families that were looking for some modicum of leadership, for some modicum of, of commanding happening from this position. And that is the last thing they got from this display last night. Frankly, it was shameful. Well said. And then we moved on to the White House press briefing, and I have a soundbite here from CBS Ed O'Keefe. Here's one of the questions that was asked. How was he? How was his mood? How was he uh, in dealing with all these, with the incoming information? How was he in asking the questions of military commanders? Is that well, I, I would say that anyone who's watched uh, the president up close, which is most of you, uh, knows that. Uh, the, the putting the lives of servicemen and women at risk and those decisions that you have to make as commander in chief weigh heavily on him. So the question was, how is he doing? It reminds me of the first briefing where one of the questions is, how is he feeling? He's waited a long time to be in the Oval Office. Morgan, a stark difference there from the Pentagon press corps, who has done a really, really good job at asking questions I think the American people deserve to have answered. Yeah, they've been really tough in holding the administration accountable, and that's what we need from a media, from an independent press corps. I will say, listen, I, I, this had to be a horrible day for the president and his team. I mean, you don't lose that many Americans um, in combat, especially when you promised an orderly uh, ex uh, exit from Afghanistan just a few months ago. The president was promising that there wouldn't be chaos, that it wouldn't be Saigon. In fact, it looks worse uh, than all the scenarios any of us even predicted. And, and so um, this is why we need media to hold people accountable. And this is why you're seeing it at the Pentagon briefing room, as you talked about, Kaylee, because we were promised by this president multiple times a set of outcomes in leaving Afghanistan that didn't happen. And so I'm not, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually not faulting him for his performance yesterday. It's not the type of command leadership that I want to see from the commander in chief. I agree with Emily. There was times that I was nervous and thought, oh gosh, you know, what, what's happening when he got very quiet. But I have no doubt that everybody in that White House said it was one of the most gut-wrenching days of their careers. And it should be. They have a lot to answer for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's certainly true. And then we have a soundbite from the press secretary. I think it was a day or two ago, two days ago. It was certainly before the devastating attack uh, yesterday. Let's play that soundbite. That this is now on track, Peter, to be the largest airlift in U.S. history. Uh, so, and that is a. a bringing American citizens out. It is bringing our Afghan partners out. It is bringing allies out. Uh, so no, I would not say that is anything but a success. Joey, I think a good question would have been, do you still stand by that assessment? How did you not see this? You know, if that's the kind of language you were having, how did you not see this on the horizon? Yeah, you bring out 100,000 people, but we still have uh, SIVs that are trying to be killed that can't make it through the gates. We still have 1,000 Americans that couldn't get there. This is, you know, gross products is a little bit different than precision. I'll tell you, if we could extract Americans, if this administration could extract Americans the way that Jennifer Griffin has extracted information, we probably wouldn't have a crisis right now. So I just want to give her a, a nod, and I'm glad that someone like Peter and Jennifer are there to, to get information for us. I mean, the most courageous thing Biden's done is take a question from Peter yesterday. Absolutely. And look, the language we heard yesterday, the, the I will hunt you down from Biden. I want to make clear that Saki soundbite was from previous to the attack, but that language is what we should have heard from the very beginning. I will hunt you down.